In this video I'm going to look at order and the rate equation. So I've made up a reaction there, two moles of J reacting with a mole of A and a mole of D and that goes on to make two moles of O and a mole of N. And it was determined experimentally that the reaction was first order with respect to J, second order with respect to D and zero order with respect to A. So what we're going to do with this information here is we're going to establish what's known as the rate equation for this reaction. So if we look at the information I've written up in orange the bottom right there, this information about the order with respect to J, D and A all that's telling us is that the rate is proportional to the concentration of J to the power 1. The rate is proportional to the concentration of D to the power 2. And the rate is proportional to the concentration of A to the power 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine these three statements into one statement. So you can see I've combined everything for the reaction now. So the overall rate of this reaction is proportional to the concentration of J raised to the power 1 multiplied by the concentration of D to the power 2 multiplied by the concentration of A to the power 0. So what we need to do now is lose this proportionality and make it an equality. This is where your math skills help. So how do you do that? Well, if we want to replace a proportionality with an equality, we need to introduce a constant. And the constant that we use in chemistry in this scenario is called the rate constant, and it has the letter K. So you can see I've added the extra information now. So the rate equation for this, equi for this reaction will be rate equals K, concentration of J to the power 1, Concentration of D to the power 2, concentration of A to the power 0. Final thing is to just simplify that a little bit because whenever you've got anything raised to the power 0, which we have here, then anything to the power 0 is 1, and so we can lose that from the equation. So we end up with that. So the rate equation for this reaction, based on the information would be that. So you can see I've added some labels now. So we've got the rate equation, which is obviously this thing in the rectangle. Rate equals K, the rate constant, multiplied by the concentration of reactant J. So the square brackets signify the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. Concentration of reactant J raised to the power 1, multiplied by the concentration of D raised to the power 2. A does not feature in the rate equation because it was determined that it was zero order. So when you raise the concentration of A to the power 0 you just get 1 so you can ignore it from the rate equation. You can see there I've said that they're the orders. What else can I say about this? The overall order of this reaction would be 3 because the overall order is the sum of the individual orders. We'll talk about that in a moment. And the other thing you can say is the order has got nothing to do with the um, numbers that we use to balance the equation, the stoichiometric coefficients they're called. So there's a 2 in front of J, but you can see it was determined experimentally that it was first order. So sometimes you see students putting second order because there's a 2 in front in the balanced equation. You can't do that. So if I just pause this scenario and have a go at um, thinking about what the answer might be. So suppose the concentration of J and D were both doubled. What would be the effect on the rate? So in other words, what would the new rate be in comparison to the original rate before you did the doubling? So 
So, if you double the concentration of J to work out the effect on the rate, we raise that to the power 1 because it's first order. So we get 2 to the power 1 multiplied by the doubling of D raised to the power 2. So we've got 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power 2. So that's 2 times 4, which is 8. So effectively, if we double the concentration of everything, we would get an eightfold increase in the rate. Now, because we have done the same thing to both of the reactants, we can bring in the overall order. So we've doubled everything. The overall order is 3, 1 plus 2. And so the overall effect on the rate would be doubling 2 raised to the power 3, and we still get eightfold increase. Now you can only do that if you do the same thing to everything, which we'll have in this case. So we'll make it a little bit trickier now. Suppose the concentration of J was doubled, but the concentration of D was halved. What would be the new rate? How would the new rate compare with the original rate? So you can see this time, if we double J, we raise the doubling, there's the two, raise the power one, so we get a two-fold increase from this effect. But if D is halved, we need to square the factor, so we're going to get a quarter here. So effectively, we've got two times a quarter, which is two quarters, which is a half. So the new rate would actually be a half of the original rate. If we doubled J, would half D. So once you know the rate equation, you can calculate a value for K, provided that you know what the rate is and the concentrations of the reactants are. And in another video, I'm going to do quite a lot of those calculations. And it's the video to do with initial rates. So you might want to look out for that. But basically, if you wanted to calculate the value for K, we need to rearrange this equation for K. So we'll make K the subject. So we end up with rate over concentration of J, power 1, concentration of D to the power 2. And then you would just substitute in your values for rate and the concentration of the two reactants, not forgetting to square the concentration of D. Just a few facts about K, the rate constant. The bigger the value for K, that's telling you the reaction's actually occurring at a faster or higher rate. So large K means a fast reaction, a high rate. It's called a rate constant for a reason, and that's because it is constant provided that the temperature is kept constant. So if you play around with the temperature, you're going to change K. So the temperature increases. We all know that reactions occur at a faster rate if the temperature is increased. So K would have to reflect that and K would increase accordingly. If you're just changing the concentrations but keeping the temperature constant, then K will stay constant. And again, you will see that in action in the initial rates video. We'll finish the video by looking at how to work out the units for K for the rate constant. So we're going to rearrange this rate equation for K. So we'll end up with K equals rate all over concentration of J to the power 1 multiplied by the concentration of D to the power 2. So, as long as you know the units for all of the terms in the equation, then you can work out the units of what you're trying to find out. So, what have we got? We've got the units of rate is moles per decimeter cubed per second divided by moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by moles per decimeter cubed squared 
Now there's a few ways you can do this. If you're not very confident with the squaring, you can literally write them out twice. So moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed. So you've effectively got three lots of moles per decimeter cubed on the bottom, all multiplying each other. If you're more confident with your unit, you could see that you've got moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by moles per decimeter cubed squared. So you're going to have moles cubed decimeters to the minus 9 on the bottom. Either way, you're going to get the right answer, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. So seeing as how I've got this already written up, we'll just use this. So we cancel what we can, moles, moles, dm to the minus 3, dm to the minus 3. So what are we left with? We're left with seconds to the minus 1 on the top, and moles times moles, moles squared on the bottom. dm to the minus 3 times dm to the minus 3 becomes dm to the minus 6. We're going to drag these up to the top, and we're going to get seconds to the minus 1, it's already on the top, moles to the minus 2, and decimeters to the 6. So when we take these up to the top, we change the sign of the power. Now, by rights, when you're writing units out, you would actually be okay writing it like that in chemistry, but if you wanted to write it properly, you'd write your positive power first. So dm to the 6, mol to the minus 2, s to the minus 1.